Are you planning a trip to India and overwhelmed with how much you need to do before you go? In today's video, I'm gonna cover exactly what you need to do, when you need to do it, and I have a free PDF to stay organized. Welcome to another video, I'm Ben Jenks. Today we're talking about the ultimate travel checklist for your India trip. I made a PDF giving you exactly what you need to do starting six months before you depart and it will walk you through the process. The reason I did this is because when I was talking to my mom and my aunt, they were overwhelmed with all the things that you need to get done before your trip. And before I came, I remember feeling the same way. You know, you're wondering like, when do I get my visa? How early should I get travel insurance? Do I need these vaccinations? So I hope that this lays out the process nice and quick for you so you can be organized and have everything taken care of so you can have an excellent India trip. Quick interruption, I'm Benjamin Jenks. I make India travel tips on YouTube. If you're interested, please click subscribe, please click the bell and follow along. Okay, things you need for a trip to India. You're going to need a visa. It doesn't take too long to get. You need travel insurance unless you really want to risk it, which I don't recommend. I made a video about when you don't need travel insurance though. You can also check that out on my channel. You're going to need flight tickets, probably train tickets, accommodation, vaccinations, maybe. I'll walk you through the thought process there a little bit. Uh, you need a valid passport with at least six months before it expires when you depart. And if you want to rent a scooter and be completely legal, you need to get an international driver's license. And I can tell you how to do that. Let's start four to six months before you leave. So questions you're going to be asking yourself at this point is, how long can I travel for? Are you going for a two week trip and just hitting some hot spots? Or can you take six months off of work and do a full on backpacking trip in India? This point, ask yourself that question. You're gonna to wanna to start researching destinations. I know that there are some great YouTube videos, um, hopefully for myself uh, that you can watch, but also other people you know, searching YouTube. I found so much inspiration watching other YouTubers. So this is that time where you're starting to think, do you want to go to Goa and party all night on the beach? Uh, do you want to learn more about the history of India and see the Taj Mahal and the Agra Fort and go to Jaipur and see the palaces? Do you want to learn yoga in a place like Rishikesh? Um, do you want to go to the Himalayas and live in a little hut and meditate? Or do you want to get uh, one of those things that you fly with and hold on, hang gliding, that's it. Do you wanna go hang gliding in the Himalayas or whitewater rafting? These are the questions you're asking yourself four to six months out and you probably already know the answer to this. So I won't go too much into it, but um, you wanna start thinking about this. One thing that I can recommend is booking.com, hotel booking site. Let's say you're thinking about going to Goa. You're not 100% sure though, so you don't want to spend any money. You go on booking.com, you start looking for places. You see a good hotel, you like, book it. Most of them have free cancellation. And I've definitely booked a few, and then two weeks before been, oh yeah, I'm actually, I like this place best, so I'm gonna cancel those others with no penalty to myself. That's what's cool about booking.com. Another thing you can be doing at this time is to set up low price flight alerts. So skyscanner.com. Search your home airport and where you wanna go in India and then you can click track prices. What it's gonna do is it's going to start alerting you when the prices are low, which is cool. It can save you some time because I know thinking about when to book the flight and get the best price was a question on my mind and it's probably on your mind too. Also, Google Flights has a similar service. You can search your flight. There's a little button to click track prices. 
You can see the price history as well. So if it's a little sooner than four to six months when you're watching this, you can start to get a sense for how high or low the price is and they'll recommend whether it's a good time to buy or not. Indian Railways, 120 days before your trip or about four months, you can buy train tickets. So you'd wanna go on their website, R-I-R-T-R-C, and look for train tickets. You can also look on other, just search India train tickets, where you wanna go and get some ideas for prices. You don't need to book that yet, but you can book as early as 121 days in advance. You wanna book at least a month though. You got time at this point. Another thing you wanna do is if you want, if you're sure where you're going, you can get an Indian tourist visa online. It takes, gosh, a couple hours probably. It's slightly confusing, but most people can figure it out. You'd get your results and get approved within two days. If you do your visa at this point, you're ahead of the game. I would recommend a month before to do your visa. Of course, I mentioned before, you wanna make sure your passport is valid and has at least six months before it expires when you depart. Travel insurance. Now I made two videos about this on my channel. One, do you need trip cancellation insurance or not? And two, when can you not, or excuse me, when do you not need to buy travel insurance? So if you're at that stage where you don't know anything about it, those two videos will get you up to speed. And I have a couple um, options that I found stood out as the best ones for a traveler like myself, uh, World Nomads and Safety Wing. I explained them in that video, so I'm not going to go into them here. But at this stage, you wanna have a general understanding of the type of coverage you need and when to sign up. The cool thing about signing up early for travel insurance is that if something happens between now and when you go, you can be covered for it on your trip. For instance, let's say it's a month before my trip, I sign up for travel insurance and then I break my leg. Now, had I signed up after I broke my leg, that would be a pre-existing medical condition. And let's say I was in India and my broken leg started hurting again, and I need to go to the hospital. That would not be covered under, because it's a pre-existing condition. Now, if it happened before I bought travel insurance, it would be covered. So that's one thing to keep in mind as you're buying insurance. There's no rush to buy travel insurance ahead of time, but if you do, you could potentially have, it, it's, a, it's a better situation for you. Another question to be asking yourself is, should you get vaccinations or not? The CDC recommends that most travelers get vaccinated for hepatitis A and typhoid. They recommend that some travelers get vaccinations for cholera, hepatitis B, malaria, Japanese encephalitis, rabies, and yellow fever. Now, this is totally up to you. My family, when they came, they got vaccinations. They were happy that they did. Um, I will warn you that when you're getting vaccinations, the doctors are gonna scare you about the worst things that can happen in India. That happened to my mom and my aunt. They were more terrified about these things than me who'd been living here for a year and a half. Now, on the other hand, I never got vaccinations. I'm not recommending you do that, but, and I haven't had any problems. So that's another perspective to consider. The reason why you're just considering at this point is you only need to get these vaccinations four to six weeks before you go. But if you're like me, you'd wanna decide earlier. At this point, learning about India, I had mentioned YouTube videos would be an option, but I'm a, a reader, so I made a video about the 12 books to read before coming to India. If you're a reader too, you could check that out. A book like Midnight's Children is a novel about this kid who was born when India became independent and him and everyone else who was born on that day can like meet up in their minds and have these uh, magical powers. But as they go through this fantastical story, it tells you the history of India. So when you're here, you can have a better sense of what was partition like and what was the independence like and what's the relationship between Hindus and Muslims and why do they sometimes have beef? So that's one option to, um, to start getting yourself prepped. Another is I wrote a post about the 50 best movies that have India in them. 
Because I know before I came, I was just hungry for anything Indian, and I couldn't find a good list about this, so I made up one, and if you were like me, you can check it out. Okay, let's fast forward seven to ten weeks before your departure. It's time to buy your international flight. Now, one of the studies that was done about when's the best time to book your flight was CheapAir.com studied 917 million flights and they found that, let's see here, 54 days was the cheapest time on average, uh, 54 days before you depart, on average was when was the best time to buy your tickets. They also found in 2017 it was 70 days. In general, between three weeks out and four months is when you're gonna have the best time to buy your tickets. On average, the prices are within 5% of the lowest price. So in that range, at about this time, you're gonna find a good price on a ticket. And if you see a good price, buy it, because it might go up the next day. The six weeks before departure, time to finalize things. You want to know your itinerary at this port, book your hotel rooms, book your train tickets, book any domestic flights in India. If you're taking a tour, now's a good time to book it. Apply for your visa, buy your travel insurance, and get an international driver's license. Now let me just talk about this very quickly. So you don't need this. If you're in India, you can rent a scooter from anyone. And when I rented mine, you go to this guy and he's like, hey, can you drive? And I'm like, yeah, I can drive. And he's like, okay, come back and pay me a thousand rupees in whatever amount of days. They don't really care. Any police that I've been stopped by hasn't cared. Now, however, I've known that if I get in a scooter accident, my travel insurance company is going to do what they can not to pay me. And technically, to be a legal driver in India, I need to have an international driver's license. So I'm going to get one. I don't have one now, but the next time I go home, I'm going to get one. Because in case I get in an accident, something happens, then I could be sure that I get paid out by my travel insurance. So that's just something to consider. You can get it on AAA's website. In my article, I have a link to how to get it. I think it's like 30 to 50 bucks. It doesn't take very long. So it's worth getting if you want a scooter around India, which I would recommend. It's a lot of fun. Not for everyone though. At this point in your trip, you're gonna wanna buy your supplies. I know for me, I wanted some travel t-shirts, that good merino wool, that breeze that I can wear for multiple days, wash in my sink. Same for underwear. I'll put a link on the screen about those products if you're interested. But, you know, some good travel underwear and t-shirts is helpful in India because it's hard to get your clothes washed. And I would just wash my clothes in my sink, hang it up, the next day I'm good to go. Other supplies you might want are uh, Steri pens. So my aunt had this. It was basically a water bottle that sterilized her water so she could drink it. There's a Steri pen too, which you stick it in and it sterilizes it. You can check on Amazon for related products. This is helpful in North India where if you're going into the Himalayas or you're going to some more rural places, there may be less access to bottled water and this is a, a great option for that. What you definitely need is a travel adapter for India, charcoal tablets. I recommend grapefruit seed extract because if you get a stomach gurgling, it's going to help settle things down quickly. Of course, anti-diarrhea pills, electrolyte tablets, melatonin if you need help sleeping because of the jet lag. Mosquito net is another recommended item. Mosquitoes can really kill a night's sleep. You can get one on Amazon, packable in your bag. You're good to go. Um, if you're a woman, there's a kit for peeing, standing up, since some of the toilets are a little bit, woo. So another like a neck wallet might be helpful. Travel backpack, a packable day pack that goes in your travel backpack. Also like a VPN, like ExpressVPN, can be helpful to protect your internet activities as you're surfing Facebook in India. Those are some things. I got a full list on my website as well as a packing list that I'll include in the, in the um, down below. All right, final week before you go. If you followed this video, which I'm sure you are studiously doing, 
you're going to be good and you're not going to have a ton to do at this point and you can pretty much chill now some tips that i have are take out extra cash bring two to three hundred bucks if you're u.s dollars if you're in the u.s or the equivalent wherever you're from what i love about that is you know sometimes it's hard to find an atm the atms don't have money the atms don't work it's the best way to get money uh using an atm but it's just easy to go to your hotel and be like, hey, can I switch 100 bucks? And pretty much every hotel I've been in has been able to do that and give you a decent rate. Um, another thing I'm doing at this point is I'm gonna look at the airport where I'm flying into and I'm gonna research ATMs in that airport. In some airports, it's dead simple. In Chennai, where I flew into, I couldn't find them. So I had to go to the exchange money kiosk and their rate is super high they're probably charging me some hidden fees and i don't want to deal with that and so i always find the atm in the airport where i'm going put travel notices on your banks and your credit cards and also start packing your bag early so you're ready to go you'll want to have five you want to have paper copies of important documents like your passport your visa hotel reservations plane tickets driver's license Anything that you need a reservation for or might need to show somebody, bring a paper copy. It's helpful. I've been to hotels. They ask me for a copy, and then I just whip it out of my backpack. If I didn't do that, I have to go find a Xerox place and get a copy, and I'd rather be traveling. I also carry two digital copies of my important documents, one on my computer, one in a little stick, you could also keep one on like a Google Drive or an Evernote, an online thing. So in case I lost those things, I could access them. For all of these details, they're on my website, Chai Nomad. Link is right there. And there's a PDF that I can show you here real quick. You can check the little boxes, print it out, and then use as you're getting ready for your trip to know exactly what you need to do. If you're coming up with your travel budget, it can be difficult to know how expensive or inexpensive is India. So I made a video, a two week travel budget with also another free template. If you're in the stage where you're coming up with your travel budget, that could be helpful. You can find the link right there.